Hi, my name's Abby and I'm the Learning and Engagement Manager at London Wildlife Trust and today we're going to be looking at colours in nature. What is colour and how do we see it? White light contains wavelengths. Colours are made by wavelengths of light reflecting off objects like this apple. The object absorbs some of the light and reflects others. Colour detecting cells in the eye allow the reflected light to be seen as colour. Us humans and other primates are trichromatics, meaning we have three cone cells. We can see red, blue and green. But by combining these all together, we can see many different colours. But what about other animals? This slug and snail are monochromatic, meaning they only have one cone cell, so they can only see in black and white. They also have very blurry vision. Mammals such as whales, dolphins and seals also are monochromatic. Many other mammals are dichromatic, meaning they have two cone cells. Dogs can see in yellow and blue to ultraviolet, so Rinko here can't tell the difference between this red treat and this green treat. Though I think he'll happily eat them both. Many amphibians, like this toad, birds, reptiles, fish and some insects are tetrachromatics, meaning they have four cone cells. Some can see infrared and some can see ultraviolet. How am I looking? Colours in nature can be important for describing different species. When Charles Darwin went on his beagle voyage in the 1830s, he took with him this book, Ferner's Nomenclature of Colours, a book containing 108 precisely described colours by Scottish artist Patrick Syme. His colours all referenced specific minerals, plants and animals. Like Siskin Green, for example, because of the Siskin bird. It's described as emerald green mixed with much yellow and a little yellowish white. And my favourite, the greyish blue, which is composed of Berlin blue with white, a small quantity of grey and a hardly perceptible portion of red, which describes the animal of the back of a blue titmouse, which is more commonly known today as the blue tit. But why are animals and plants different colours? Let's look at colour for protection. Animals and plants need to protect themselves from predation or harm. To do this, they may be toxic, but it's no good to your survival just to be toxic. You need to advertise that. Animals, plants and these fungi may have warning patterns of bold colours such as yellow, orange or red or white combined with contrasting dark colours like brown or black. The caterpillar of the cinnabar moth is black and yellow. It eats ragwort, which makes them toxic. Even after pupating and turning into the moth, they retain their toxin, so advertise it with their black and red markings. Predators quickly learn to avoid creatures with similar markings and colours. Animals copy each other's appearance to reinforce their danger. An example is the recognisable yellow and black stripes of this venomous honeybee, which is very similar to this venomous wasp. Animals can use these warning colours to protect themselves, even if they don't possess any superpowers. They'll copy the colours and patterns of another animal in their same habitat. This hoverfly, though completely harmless, has got in on the black and yellow stripe action. How else can animals use colours for protection? Animals may use their colour to blend in with their surroundings to avoid being seen by predators, like these frogs. This is called camouflage or cryptic coloration. Some animals can also change their colour as their surroundings change. Chameleons are the well-known example of colour changing in almost an instant. But some animals we have in the UK also have these colour changing tricks up their sleeve, though at a slower rate. The female four-spot orb weaver spider has the title of the heaviest spider in Britain but also has an amazing trick of being able to change her colour over a few days to blend in with her surroundings, a skill she uses most probably as camouflage to avoid predators and to hide from her prey. The stoat is an animal native to Britain. In northern colder regions, it will change its colour depending on the seasons. 
It's normally a brown, but in winter their coat will start to change to white, ready to blend with the winter snow. In spring, they'll start to switch back to brown. Using colour for attraction Birds are a well-known example of being colourful to get a mate. It is usually the male who is much more colourful to try and attract the attention of a female. A well-known bird example is the peacock, but if you look around in your garden, balcony or out on your daily walk, you may be able to spot many native birds where the male and female have quite different colourings. Females have much duller colours as they often spend more time back in the nest and need to blend in to the surrounding trees for safety. <laughs> but what about attraction for other purposes? While well, flowers are very brightly coloured to attract a variety of insects and other pollinators, they also have special colours in ultraviolet that we can't see with our eyes, but insects can, and they lead the insects to the pollen. The same species of animal can have different colourings. It can make them hard to identify. These snail shells have all come from the same species, the brown lip snail. In hotter areas, snails have paler colours to reflect sunlight and warmth so they stay cooler. In colder conditions, their shells are likely to be darker to absorb more heat to keep the snail warm. As a test, why not try putting an ice cube on different coloured pieces of paper on a sunny day and see which paper the ice cube melts the quickest on? These colours at the top of the rainbow are the most common colours in nature and the further down the rainbow you go, they become rarer. Blue is the rarest colour of them all. Did you know only 10% of the world's flowering plants produce blue blooms? I encourage you all to go out in nature and see how many amazing colours you can find. Can you spot any blue flowers? How many colours on different birds can you see? And what mini beast colours can you find? Share your colourful sightings on our social media and hashtag wildlife from your window. Thanks for watching and bye for now.